Aliens have long benefited from their probing technology, at our expense, mind you. But thanks to Fusion 360, we have some probing technology of our own. And in this video, we're going to show you how to get the most out of it. If there was going to be a first tip for this video, it would be buy the probes. Well, I've never heard anyone buy a machine and say, man, I really regret buying the probing package that came with it <laughs> because they save you so much time, right? Uh, just the tool probe alone, because it's kind of automated, it gives you an opportunity to grab another hole or grab another tool and a collet and put it together while he's touching off your probe more accurately than you could. Also, all the tools in the carousel, they're all going to be touched off identically. So that means you could use them for any program that you call up. The work probe, it can also save you a lot of time and makes your setups more versatile because you can touch off in a variety of locations. And it can double as a CMM and throw the dimension up of that critical feature that you have and you know whether it's right or wrong before you even open the door. Before we move into Fusion, it's always a good practice to have your part locked down in the position it's going to be cut before you probe it or touch off that component. Uh, the reason is because even with a nice vise and steel jaws cutting a steel part, there can be some flex, maybe not a lot, but if that vise has some age on it, you can start seeing quite a bit of flex, maybe up to five thousands. And if you're starting to use aluminum soft jaws, or you're cutting an aluminum piece, or even a plastic piece, well you could see a little bit of flex when you tighten up that part. And so it's always good to touch it off after that's done. So the very first tip would be a simple one, and this is tool brake control. Uh, for instance, you're making this part, and you've got, it starts off with a drill, could start off with anything, and then it moves into a, a end mill that's going to drive, that's going to dive straight down into that part and rough that out, and we're running quick. There's an easy way to make sure that that tool survived this operation, and it's okay to proceed to the next. And you can go to setup here go to manual NC and then you can just pull down the operations here and you can see tool brake control. You can do a tool measure but that's not what we're doing. We just want to make sure that tool is still there. We've already measured it. It's already done. Too late. For that, click OK. Now you get this tool brake control. You simply drag this after whatever tool you want to make sure survived. So right here tool number two is our drill. He starts with him and then he goes down, checks whether that tool is still there. Now if we needed to do that again before he gets to the next school, next tool, you can right click, say duplicate, and anywhere you duplicate this and drag it at the end uh, after an operation, uh, he will go ahead and just kind of run that check. Uh, that way you can run overnight and not worry whether you're going to break a thousand dollars worth of tools after that first one goes. Right here, we want to make sure we have a good probing definition. In other words, we want to make sure the ruby is the right diameter and the stylus is the right length. Otherwise, if you have a bad definition inside of Fusion, you could find yourself uh, making good clearances in the software, but in reality, wrecking your probe. So how do we go about doing all that? Well, initially, you want to go to your probing operation. You want to select your tool. That automatically filters looking for probes. In the Fusion 360 library, uh, you go down to probes here, and you might have to enable this. There might be a little blue button there that looks similar to this that says turn on this library. But then find the probe that best fits the one in your machine. Uh, for instance, I have a Haas, so I'm using the OMP 40-2, uh, and this one is the closest one. Uh, it's 50 millimeter long stylus, six millimeter long ruby. And so I would want to put this inside of a tool library. For instance, I've got a VF1 and a TM2P. My VF1, notice I have a probe in here. If I right click and edit that, I'd want to make sure that my post processor knows exactly what pocket he is in my machine. I use the last pocket in this machine. I got 20 tools. Well, really I got 19 because my 20th tool is my probe. So I want to make sure that that's accurate and then my stylist information is accurate. 
Once that is done, I can hit accept, select that tool, and then select the geometry. I'm looking to probe, and I'm off to the races. Okay, so the first thing we need to know whenever we're using probing inside of Fusion is just because you probe in a location doesn't mean that's where it's going to set your work coordinate offset. For instance, when you're on the Haas machine or you're on a CNC machine, you probe a bore or a boss or a box or a cube, then it's going to offset that and put zero right in the middle of that feature. But inside Fusion, he still obeys where the work coordinate offset is in relation to whatever it is on the part that you're probing. So for instance, when you set this part up on the mill and probe it on the machine, you would, you'd want to uh, probe that corner, right? Because that's where your zero location is. But after that, when you come inside a fusion, because the outside of this might be a casting or injection molded part that can fluctuate, we'd want to probe the feature that everything is in relation to. The one thing that needs to stay the same. And so you probe this feature and now everything you machine would be relative to that feature. So when you're probing this feature inside of Fusion, what it's doing is it probes this feature, then it offsets it in the X negative 3.483, and it, it offsets in the Y positive 1.868, and sets that theoretical corner where it should be in the perfect world, or where it is inside the perfect world, which is Fusion. Well, that's a wrap, you know, of our first video in a series of videos that we're doing on probing. And so the next videos are gonna cover things like probing irregular surfaces and using it for QC. So you definitely wanna subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Uh, if you have any comments that you'd like to give us, ideas for future episodes, we'd definitely like to hear about that. But again, we appreciate you watching and we'll catch you next time.